Hello and welcome to another video today where we're going to be talking about the big toe and just how important this single joint is for providing stability not just for your feet but your entire body and how it can actually cause a pro lot of problems in other joints so let's get into it um, so firstly when you're walking which is the gait cycle your entire body passes over this one joint um, so the big, this means the big toe has a massive influence over what happens to the rest of the joints above and, and how efficiently we move. So it has the ability to dorsiflex. So dorsiflex is um, where it sort of pulls up like, like, a, like that uh, and there. So that's dorsiflexion. So, and subsequently it, can ra it raises the heel during the single support phase. So this is when we're sort of lifting the foot up um, and, it's a, and this is where the foot is in a position where it's about to absorb the landing. Um, so uh, this foot's pushing off, so you can see here, so it's a push off, so it has to fully um, flex itself and then it has to fully extend itself. All right, so it's got a, a massive role to play in, in, in something like we take for granted with walking. And a lot of people will develop a lot of problems through the, the hips and the knees, and even the lower back, to be, to be honest, um, from issues that are being born at the big toe here. All right, so um, so this basically is just sort of summing up what, how important that big toe is. So as we've just discussed, it's essential for normal efficient walking. So the way the foot's designed allows the big toe to plan to flex. So that's what we quickly spoke about. And this is to enhance the low buried capacity. So it needs to have about 50 to 70 degrees of extension during a, it, like a static evaluation. So if you just sort of... Um, just being able to stand still and, and be able to do that. If it doesn't have that, you're going to have to compensate and cheat around it. The dorsiflexion, now this is a huge one, right? So, uh, I, and I'm going to touch on this later, but um, as, a, as you transition from the mid stance into the push off, this is where the dorsiflex is, is really huge. And this is where the plantar fascia, and a lot of people have heard about that, and that's the underneath the foot there. Um, that's when that is activated. So, the activation is of the plantar fascia upon the big toe is referred to as a windlass, windlass mechanism and is the second step in preparing the foot for propulsion. All right, so, so the body's dependent upon this, the foot's ability to become this rigid lever. So it's where it, it has to go from being rigid at one point to being um, flexible at another to be able to provide us with um, efficient walking. So some people, uh, and would have heard the flat foot person they just don't they can't create the rigid lever and then there's other people that are too rigid and they can't actually unlock the foot so you need to be able to lock and unlock at various points to be able to absorb shock and then be able to um, become stiff enough to push forward all right so this means the big toe is playing a huge role in the how the whole foot mechanism works and then again and, and basically how the entire um, chain works all right, so if the mechanism fails, you'd be forced to compensate. Um, so foot contact, body moves over the foot, progressive motion, rigid big toe results early in early foot lift off, locking up the big toe joint. And then you get, so you can see here, abnormal pelvic tilt um, because all of these other joints are trying to compensate around the fact that the big toe didn't do what it was supposed to do. Um, a big postural problem we see with the big toe dysfunction is gradual shift into a forward weight bearing position. So this forward leaning position is, you know, like, here's the picture here, shows this is where we see you should hunch shoulders and stuff like that, but a lot of calf tightness, hyperextension of the knees, um, have normal pelvic tilting, which again plays problems in the lower back or the, or the hips or the, or the knees. Um, you can see how all of this is just created from this one little joint that no one thinks anything of. It really even has any pain. It just has a real loss of um, mobility um, and, and, its, and its function is really greatly impaired. Um, so when we start to compensate around it, the brain, brain basically learns from repetition that this is the new way to move um, and it won't really question if it's good or bad for it. It'll just continue to use it until it's shown a, a, a different way. Um, and, and you can see how many other movements are going to be greatly impaired from this poor position. Um, and this is the joint by joint approach we've seen many of our videos or read our articles before and this is not something I created, this is from Mike Boyle and Dre Cook uh, came up with this concept many years ago and I, I really like this, it's a great way of looking at how every second joint needs a different 
role. So you said big toe needs mobility, but the midfoot needs stability. Ankle needs mobility, but the knee needs stability. So you can see every second one has the same thing, um, and the one above and below has, a, has an opposing role. So I sort of see if this big toe loses its mobility, so the ability to dorsiflex, which I'll see a lot, it compromises the, the, the stability of the foot because the, the, the foot's going to give up its stability to make up for the loss of mobility here, all right, and so on and so on. Um, so when we walk or, or do anything standing, the big toe is the first thing to move. This has, and, and as it has to compensate due to rigidity or lack of movement, it begins to set off a chain reaction to all of your other joints. And every joint is now compromised, stability is lost, and you set up for pain. All right, so some of the common compensations are instability in the midfoot, ankle, and limited hip extension, right? So they're the main ones we start to see. So loss of midfoot proprioception. This is that plantar fascia we spoke about before. Anyone who's had plantar fasciitis will know exactly what, what this is. Um, so but basically loss of proprioception leads to plantar, leads to plantar fasciitis and Achilles strains, all right? So um, you basically just not got very good stability in this, in this foot region. Loss of ankle mobility we see is a huge problem with knees, right? Poor squatting technique we say with this. Poor squatting technique means we have poor jumping, landing. Um, we need to have at least 10 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion, so it'd be like a dorsiflexion where, where the, the knee's coming out, uh, like a calf stretch, more or less. Um, and, and you need to have this for just to be able to move correctly, because if you don't have good ankle mobility, you're going to force the knee to move too much. So you can see how the knee becomes a huge problem in this joint's limited. All right, so um, the last one we see, limited hip extension. So it can lead to classic overpronated foot. So this is that flat foot, but this is the rigid foot. So both of these feet are not good. They, neither of them absorb shock well um, or, or um, can create stiffness to create propulsion. So um, what we see with this person with the limited hip extension, their stride length shortens. Um, and that, that reduces their hip extension and their glute activation. And everyone's heard about glute problems. So this is where you start to see hip problems now, see? So um, things like piriformis syndrome, even bulging discs in the lower back, but, yeah, uh, hip impingement, all this driven by glute weakness, which is driven by the big toe and the foot. Um, when the correct pathway of motion is blocked by this dorsiflexion, compensation is guaranteed. So a person will produce a, a strange sort of way to move um, to overcome the fact that they can't come over the big toe. So they'll turn the foot out and you start to see this awful sort of mechanism of, of movement. And this is uh, where we see a lot of injuries in ACLs um, in sports. So bunions are, are eventually gonna happen because you're gonna be turning that foot out. Instead of coming over the toe, you're gonna go around the toe. Um, and, and like I said, with this, I, I can't tell you how many people I've seen with big toe issues um, that have that was a precursor to a knee problem. Uh, I've done tests. You know, there's videos that we have in the links below where I've tested a whole team of football players, and, and all the ones that had problems with big toe had problems with their knee. <laughs> all right, so um, it's very very common. Um, and again, there's usually no pain here either. It's just the pain's going elsewhere. So a good little quote here is um, from uh, Dr. Lee, Dr. Emily Spiegel, who's a podiatrist and um, done a lot of research in the foot mechanisms and stuff like that. So the ability to rapidly unlock and lock the foot is necessary for peak performance, especially in sports and movements that demand rapid change and acceleration or change of direction. Um, and, and, and I think that's a good one to keep in mind for you know what how important the foot is for how we move. So what can you do about it? Well, there's many things you can do. First thing I would say, to get some toe spreaders, practice trying to spread your toes, um, use your foot muscles. Great way to reprogram stability of the foot. And incredible how, how difficult this is for people to do. If you're, if you're a toe gripper, which we see a lot, it can be really hard. Um, good to use your fingers, even if you don't have toe spreaders. These, these don't cost much. There's plenty of places that sell them these days online. But you can use your fingers and then and then eventually try to practice doing it with your own feet, uh, your own toes. Uh, big toe lifting, this is a massive one. It's amazing how many people cannot do this. Um, you know, try lifting it and you know without moving the other toes, so just lift the big toe without using them. Um, you'll often see people try to use their hips and move the rest of their body to try and help, but 
you've got it, and that, and that gives you a clue as to where hip problems happen just from this simple test. Um, make sure it goes straight up and not out to the side. Um, and once you can do this, practice lifting the other toes. And once you can do that, practice placing them up and down, so like a fan, so go lifting them up one by one, putting them down one by one. Um, activate the foot tripod. In the description below the video, there's a link for how to do that. This is a great concept from Dr. Evan Osa that I got. Um, it's a great way to, to um, practice putting this into into play for bigger movements. So this is where you want to be able to incorporate all your simple foot stability drills into how to move with bigger movements. So teaching body how to stabilize the feet, the other joints and muscles in work, and then you start to show the body a better way of moving using this foot like it's meant to. So example, um, lunges and step ups are great because they demand the full flexion and extension of the big toe. Um, we say squats and deadlifts are great ex exercises, but they don't really demand a lot from the toe. So um, a lot of the single leg stuff will do a lot of demand a lot of full foot stability. But I'd really use a lot of these to try and um, enhance that function of the foot there and coming up into single leg stance. So both the lunges and step ups can do that. You could start in a lunge, come up in a single leg stance, and same with the step up. All right. So and, and a great and great for learning how to keep that structural alignment of of the ankle, the knee, and the hip. All right. So, if you want any, if you have any questions, want more information, go to our website. Check out. There's heaps of free reports. There's heaps of uh, detailed programs for knee pain, ACL injuries, hip problems, everything. So, um, check out the description below the video, and um, yeah, and I'll put stacks of things there that you can that'll help you with more information on what to do. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video, and we'll see you on our next one.